Welcome to your Yes Build Life. I'm your host, Brenda Winkle, educator, healer, speaker, guide, and fierce advocate for your yes. I help sensitive and successful men and women find, reclaim, and live from their full embodied yes. Through empowering you to understand your energetic hygiene, establish healthy boundaries, and heal your nervous system, you'll be able to create your yes-filled life and move through your days with more freedom, more ease, and more joy. You'll hear inspiring stories of people who found their full-bodied yes, thought leaders who pursued their own dreams and are living life on their terms, and learn new ways to find the courage, joy, ease, and freedom to more fully step into your yes-filled life. Say no to the good so you can say yes to the great. Join me on this journey to discover your yes-filled life. Whether you're looking to break free from the golden handcuffs, start a new business, find your dream job, or simply live with more intention and mindfulness, I've got you covered. Let's explore the possibilities together and make your dreams a reality. Ready? Let's do this. Let's get you to your Yes, build life. Hello, and welcome back to your Yes, Build Life. This is the final episode in season four, and it's also the final episode of 2023. We are approaching a new year. So, we're going to be talking about two really important things as we come into the new year. One is the right way to vision board, and the second is resolutions. Now we're going to actually be starting with number two first. We're going to talk about resolutions. I don't like resolutions. I'm not a fan. And here's why. Because if we look at a strength-based approach versus a deficit-based approach, resolutions tend to have us leaning towards the deficit-based approach, meaning we often focus our resolutions on things that have not gone well or things that we don't like. Now, the problem with this is two things. One is we're pointing our energy at the things that haven't gone well. And what do we know about energy? Well, we know that energy responds to attention. Where you place your attention, energy flows. So if you're placing your attention on the things that don't feel good, on the things that haven't gone well, guess what you can expect more of? That's right, the same more of the same. Energy flows where attention goes. We know this. This was discovered by scientists in the 1800s. And yet for so many of us living in the 2020s, we forget this basic, basic premise of physics. Energy flows where attention goes. So if your attention is going to the things that have not gone well, to the things you wish were different, You're activating that. There's no other way for me to say it. You are activating more of what you don't want. So the way to do a resolution, if you were going to do it, would be to approach it from a strength-based approach, which would look like focusing more on the things that have gone really well. Why would you want to do that? Because again, energy goes where attention flows, or I I mix up those, those verbs, but you know what I mean. Now, what that might look like is, for example, I'll use this podcast. I didn't know if we would hit 10,000 downloads by the end of 2023. That was my goal. I hoped that we could do that. We busted through that goal in October of 2023, we are on our way to 20,000 downloads at this point. Now that's not million, but it's 20,000 downloads. We're just a few thousand away from it. And so as I focus on something that I want to activate in 2024, I want to be in the top 1% of all podcasts by the end of 2024. And so the way that I'm going to do that is by activating and putting my attention on the things that have gone really well. I know which episodes had the most downloads. I can see by the, by that number of downloads, which 
episodes you like the most and what kinds of things you're really looking for. So as I focus on what I'm going to be bringing into 2024, I'm going to be putting my focus right there. I'm not going to focus on not hitting the goal and beat myself up and sort of punish myself into some rigid routine where I had to do X, Y, and Z kind of things. Oh my goodness. Talk about toxic energy. Like I just feel blah, just from saying that when you put your attention on the things that are going well, sometimes we fear that the things that aren't going well will get bigger or that if we ignore them, they'll just, you know, kind of escalate but that's not true. Why? Because energy flows where attention goes. This is based in physics. Like it's not even woo. It's literally physics. You can ask any physicist about the observation effect. What is the observation effect? The observation effect is that we cannot get around the, the truth that as soon as you observe something, it begins to change. And so if you're observing things you really like, you are activating more of that into your life. And I can promise you, this is true from my lived experience. I can promise you, this is true from what I'm watching my clients do. When you focus on what you want more of, that is what you get. So keep your resolutions focused on a strength-based approach and activate resolutions around things that are already going really well. The things that aren't going really well still might need a little bit of zhuzhing. And you can do this by just like, for example, let's say you have a habit where you want to get a lot more intentional around tracking your financial growth. So you would put that in as a task item in your calendar, kind of like a set it and forget it. So every month on the first of the month, I have what I call a money date. My mentor, Samantha Skelly taught us about this in the life mastermind. And I have I've started doing it and I absolutely love it. I love it. So I focus on the first day of each month. I look at all my accounts. I thank the money for being there. I thank the money for allowing it to create experiences and safety and a home for me. And guess what? I, I end up with more money because I'm focusing my attention there. So as you focus on your resolutions, that's number, that's absolutely, I was going to say number one, but it's really number only It is the most important thing. Now let's talk about the right way to vision board. Because that's the title of this episode, the right way to vision board. Okay, so here's the thing. There are a lot of ways you can vision board. You can get magazines and cut them out and use your glue and your scissors and poster board and stickers and your markers. And you can go crazy if that makes you happy. You can also create a vision board on Pinterest. You can, you can actually create a um, private board and make it your own vision board with images and words and blogs of things that you want to call into your experience. Another really fun thing you can do is to create a vision board right on your phone. You can either take pictures that you already have on your camera roll, or you can grab some pictures from your Pinterest board and then put them into an album, add a little bit of music to it and play it as a slideshow right on your phone. Now, the truth is about the right way to vision board, all of those things work. There's not really a right way to get the board. You can do it on Pinterest, on your phone, on a poster board. There's also Canva templates. There's tons of Canva templates if you like Canva. And um, you can create your vision board right there if that makes you happy. It doesn't really matter how you create it, like what medium you use. The part that is critically important is how it makes you feel. If you notice that there's any crunch or any disbelief around the things that you're putting on your vision board, 
I'm going to invite you into a flip, like to flip the switch, because if there's crunch around what you put on your vision board and you hear yourself say something like, well, that's not ever going to happen. That is a sign that you're right. <laughs> that is never going to happen because that's where you're activating your belief. That's where you're activating your energy and that's where you're activating your attention. So if you put something on your vision board and you notice there's a little bit of a whisper in there that's like, mm, I don't know if this is going to happen. I'm going to ask you or invite you to add a phrase at the beginning. Wouldn't it be nice if, wouldn't it be nice if this thing was what was happening? Wouldn't it be nice if this is where I was living? Wouldn't it be nice if this is how I was feeling? Wouldn't it be nice if blah, 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 blah. You can pick anything you want. Wouldn't it be nice if? It is such a powerful question. The reason it's so powerful is that let's just say, um, I I've done a lot of vision boarding the wrong way. Probably you have too. And one of the vision boards that I had was this little, um, deck of cards and I connected it with one of those loops. I don't know what you call it, but it's like a three ring binder loop. And so I pushed, I punched holes into the cards in the corner of each card. And then I put them on this little, this little loop that was the same size as a a three ring binder, but it was just the loop. And then I would flip through the cards. And I was talking about wanting to have a speaking gig in Italy. And so in the card, it was like, I have this speaking gig in Italy with my trip paid. And every time I looked at it, I thought, no, I don't. No, I don't have a speaking gig in Italy. And no, I'm not going to get paid for that. And guess what? I have not been to Italy yet. <laughs> But as I approach 2024, I'm flipping that on its head and I'm going to be asking, wouldn't it be nice if someone paid me to go to Italy to speak and I got to travel for free? Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't it be nice if I got to go to Cambodia in 2024? Wouldn't it be nice if I got to visit Portugal and Spain at the same time, I went to Italy and maybe wouldn't it be fun if I also got to go back to Paris? Can you feel the energy difference? The wouldn't it be nice is critical. So as you're vision boarding, we want to train your nervous system that it's safe for it to have the things that you really want. And if there's any level of disbelief in your mind or your body, that this thing is possible for you, then you can add a wouldn't it be nice in the front of it. The most important thing about your vision board, the real right way to vision board is to make sure that you're feeling good, to make sure that you feel like it's possible for you. And so maybe wouldn't it be nice isn't, isn't the phrase for you. Maybe your phrase is wouldn't it be fun if this would happen? Or wouldn't I feel good if this were to happen? Or wouldn't I love it if this were to happen? Now, here's a little, a little um, information about vision boarding. You can't vision board for other people because you are responsible for your energy, your point of attraction, your experience. You cannot experience things for another person. And you can reflect and magnify and amplify someone else's energy towards the thing that they want to experience, but you cannot experience it for them. So when you're vision boarding, don't put in your vision board things you want to attract for other people. Let them do that. Just do your own and then ask yourself that, that a version, whatever version of the question, wouldn't it be nice if that feels really juicy and good to you? And as we talk about nervous system regulation, you know, nervous system regulation is probably not even probably it is the most impactful thing that you can ever do. Because if your nervous system is jacked up, if you are living in a constant state of stress, constant fight, flight, freeze, or fawn, 
you're really blocking a lot of the best things that life has to offer you because your body interprets those things as a threat. That doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. That doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean you aren't deserving of the things that you want. It means you have a jacked up nervous system because you've had life experiences that caused a level of trauma. So as you go into 2024, the thing that I would most invite you to do is to be gentle with yourself, to give yourself grace and to do whatever you can to heal your nervous system, whether that's through breath work, perhaps you want to download the pause breath work app, or maybe you want to tap into some of my breath work events. I have a new moon ceremony on January 11th. That's one, 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 where we're going to be diving into some breath work, some nervous system regulation, and then talking about manifesting. Why? Because the number one, one, one is such a powerful number, an angel number, and it's going to be a beautiful day. So if that is appealing to you, come join us. You can register by clicking the link in the bio or go to brendawinkle.com forward slash new moon. And I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for being with me for these hundred and some episodes. And if you haven't listened to them all yet, that's okay. <laughs> um, this podcast has evolved and, um, I, and will continue to evolve. In fact, I just, I know that, you know, in 10 more years, I'm going to come back to these episodes that I'm doing right now and think, oh my goodness, how embarrassing. But right now I am so proud of the podcast. I'm so proud to have you as a listener. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of this journey. If you like this episode, would you please leave it a rating or review and share it with a friend? It's the most important thing that you can do to help and support the podcast. Wishing you the happiest 2024. I am, I'm positive that 2024 is the year that a lot of things are going to really write. They're going to like, as I say, right. I mean, you know, resolve and I'm putting my energy and attention and focus on that. I am more grateful than I can tell you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing. Bye for now. I'll see you in 2024.